Do you want to improve at a quicker pace? Check out getgoodracing.com. I've coached hundreds of drivers from real life racers to sim enthusiasts who experience rapid improvement after just one session. And while investing in top-notch hardware is great, imagine how much more you can elevate your experience by adding coaching to the mix. My methods are practical, aiming to break down complex concepts into easily digestible bits that are simple to understand. You can find reviews of the sessions I've conducted on the Fiverr link provided in the video description. Let's elevate your racing skills together. Now for the track guide. For turn 1, what I'm using as a reference for braking is this cone on the right side alongside with this white line here. So before this white line, I'm looking first at the, the cone on the right, but before this white line, I want to apply the brake, so I'm braking right here, and I plan to apex around this curb very late. If you're gonna take it early, you will run out of track on the exit. The goal will be to turn in as late as possible while maintaining low trail braking. So right now, a very, very sharp drop in the brake force. That's because if you're gonna hold the brakes too much, the car won't turn. So in order to get that rotation, you have to do it with the brake release initially and then with the steering wheel. So whenever I'm, I'm trail braking into this lower 20 percentages, that's where I'm turning more, more and more. And also I'm downshifting to third gear to get that extra rotation. Apexing here, which is very, very late, um, very late apex, almost at the end of the curb, cutting this curb as much as I can to the grass and also immediately back on throttle. So if we rewind just a bit at this point, even before I touch the curb right now, I'm already back on throttle. And this is very important because you will get a bit of the rotation from the throttle as well. Whenever you put the power down, the rear is going to turn a bit more. And then you're gonna lose all the rotation the more than the more than the power goes on and on. So at 10% throttle, the car will rotate. But in the next phase, like right now, after that, whenever I'm reaching 80%, the car won't rotate anymore under throttle. So that first press on the throttle pedal is giving me a bit of rotation. But right now, whenever I have all the rotation, I don't need it anymore. So I'm just doing a slight adjustment because I was very, very early, very early on throttle. And right now I'm using all the track, like right now. This should be the positioning you should aiming for. Now bringing the car all the way to the right side, not all the way, but very close to the white line. And whenever I'm this close to this green curb, I'm beginning to turn and slightly brake. I don't want to downshift. I just want to trail brake in the lower five, six percentages and then back on throttle and cut this curve. The car is going to be unstable here. So in order to rotate the car, you will have to brake less. This is very important. The car will rotate more, the less you're going to brake. So if you're going to spike the brakes here to 20 percentages, the car won't rotate as much as if you're just holding five percentage. So very light on the brake. And the car is already oversteering for me. At this point, I had to do some correction, but brake less and cut more here. This curb, you will be pushed all the way towards the green curb. So you should use the green curb. This should be a reference. And now going into the big, big straight, braking point is before the 50. So slightly before the 50, applying the brakes, braking quite hard initially, picking 90. And again, very important to be early on throttle here and the apex late. So releasing the brakes at this point, I have just 2% brakes on and I'm already back on throttle. So at this point, I'm already hitting the throttle, but look, I'm cutting the curb late and very important to be, to be this early on throttle because you're going to carry the speed all the way towards this straight. The earlier you're going to be on throttle, the better it's going to be. So force yourself to progressively go earlier on throttle. For the next corner, the braking point is again the 50 meter board, slightly before it. So let's say to this Marshall building right here, whenever I'm not seeing it anymore, I'm applying the brakes. Again, 90% brakes, very, very hard braking zone. Initially, you want to brake with the steering wheel straight, so you will maximize the efficiency under braking. And then after the brake release, you're gonna turn and you will try 
once again to apex very late around this curb you don't want your car to get pushed all the way to the left because of the next corner so for the next left hander you don't have a lot of time to prepare it so you should have a tight line in the previous corner meaning the corner that we just discussed this one we just have to be very tight around here so that will be already positioned for the the next left hander positioning all the way to the white line and the moment that i start to see the curbing because it's a downhill zone you don't really see it the moment when i start to see it more and more i'm applying the brakes it's just like 10 percent braking very important in this corner to go early on throttle because this is a cambered corner there's a lot of grip here so right now you have a lot of grip and you have to use it so be early on throttle here, the car can handle it and smash it to 100%. Using this curb on the exit and now for the next left hander, my reference for turning is the moment that I mount this curb. Whenever I feel in the wheel that I'm over the curbing on the right side, I'm committing it to the corner. I'm just barely breaking 5% again and then cutting it very late using all the track getting almost the grass here very important so cutting the curb on this track will mean a lot of lap time now looking at this marshall post right here on the right side when it's very close to me so after the 50 i'm applying the brakes so don't break at the 50 brakes slightly after the 50 i'm looking at this po marshall post right here and i break in relationship with that very hard on the brakes initially it's not that hard but it's still hard enough because you don't have a lot of time to prepare for it so if you're gonna brake later you have to brake a bit harder and keep the steering wheel straight and you're gonna trail brake trail still trailing long trail braking zone up until you're in the middle of the curve then you go back on power because once again there's a next corner coming in very very quickly and you don't have a lot of time to prepare it so it's very important to not go on the right side here so stay again very tight on the left, bring the car all the way to the white line. Very important to have it on the white line to open the next corner because you can gain or lose a lot of lap time if you don't open it up properly. So your tires, your left tires should be touching almost the grass. And for me, the moment in which I'm, I'm getting committed to the next corner is the moment that I have the car all the way to the left. So as soon as my car is all the way to the left, how I like it, then I'm applying uh, first the steering angle. So you don't want to brake on a straight line and then turn. You want to first turn and then drop the throttle and apply 10% braking. Still in third gear, I found that second gear is going to be quicker because you're going to get... Because this is almost like an uphill go, uh, zone, like right now you're going uphill a bit the engine RPMs are going to be a bit lower for third gear. However, third is going to be a bit easier on the tires. I would say second gear will be like one tenth quicker than third gear. So if you're going for a hot lap or for a qualifying lap, use second gear instead of third, but beware that you can uh, overheat the rear tires and you can use a bit of time because the car will slide. So you have to modulate the throttle application a bit more with second, with third gear you can just push it and it will the car will stick now i had to do this correction because i apexed a bit early very very important apex later you won't be needed to do this correction uh, this is a flat out corner the only thing you should care about is to have this right tire past the curb so it's almost like you're taking this curb between the car it's not like between the the car but it's almost in the middle of the car so cut a lot this curb this is going to allow you to be flat out and for the last corner the moment that i'm very very close to this part of the track with the sand so you you can see here that there's a darker color of the sand and then you don't see the darker color whenever i'm very very close to the end of the darker color of the sand i'm applying the brakes still in fourth gear very important to be aligned all the way to the left this is a huge straight coming up ahead so preparing this corner is going to be key now pushing the brakes and don't downshift the third third gear is going to give you a lot of rotation more than the car can handle and you will risk to spin it i would challenge you to stay in fourth gear and manage the rotation with the trail brake so still trailing still trailing still trailing 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 up on this point and then going back on power using all this curb and in short that's a track guide for okayama with the f4
I hope you have a great week ahead and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.